thank you so much. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Yellow the Poet, and we are here with Ron. He is one of the awesome um, presidential RLB training and development, has been, doing, has been doing that for quite some time. And we are going to speak with Ron about his occupation and give us some insight on how this actually works for you, Ron. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, my, my background is, it, it, obviously, it's in training and development. I had been doing this for a long, long time, starting to approach 29 years. And truly, I, I am so unbelievably blessed. And I am so grateful because I found my calling. This is what I was meant to do. And I, I say proudly, I'm good at what I do. I have a lot of fun with what I do. And it's, I mean, it, how can it get any better when I'm in front of a group doing my thing? And I, at times, because I am concentrating on group, of course, at times, though, truly, I will have the thought, I get paid to do this. I actually get paid. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, I'm glad that you get to share that experience with myself and the audience. It is actually good, definitely, to have you here. And it's a great thing because it's something that actually helps other people as well as you probably learn some things from it yourself in the process of helping other people. Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. And, and Yelo, you know what? One of, one of the interesting things... That, that I have learned over the years and probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to put a number on it. Maybe the last 10, 15 years, whatever it is, one of the things that I have truly learned and truly believe is that, and, and, and one of my goals in my sessions, I want people to learn from each other. It's not about me. You know, it's like, listen to me and let, you know, let me, tell you everything I know about this subject. That's not what it's about. It's about the participants. It's about what they need, what they need to learn. And very, very often the best learning comes from the participants talking to each other. Now I facilitate that granted, except yes. they learn from each other. And that's, that's wonderful when that happens. Yes, oh my goodness. I can relate to that. Um because I don't know if you've seen some of my works, but I actually have um, a gentleman's club. It's a virtual gentleman's club. It's online, it's called YTP Gentleman's Club, co-ed. And I teach about, mostly about um, raising young men, especially for those fathers who are not there in the home where you got the single parent moms that are trying to raise their boys and the, there's a communication barrier between yeah. the male and the female a lot of times. So I try to bridge the gap and try to make that communication barrier lessen by giving them some pointers and showing them things that will actually help them to raise their boys better and have a better relationship. Right. So right. That, that's, I can kind of relate to that because if I'm giving them pointers, then it gives them the opportunity to ar articulate what I'm giving them and they can take that and they can run with that themselves as opposed to saying, oh, this is what you said, do do this step by step. No, it doesn't work that way because everybody's different. That's right. I mean, and, 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 and you know, that's, that's exactly right. And one of the things, too, that I, I think has helped me over the years is that I also believe very, very strongly in speaking for myself. In other words, I, you know, I use I responses, first person singular, as much as I possibly can, where it's just, Ron, you know, what are your thoughts about this? This has been my experience. Exactly. This is what I have done. Yes. You know, I can't guarantee you it's going to work for you. I can't. It works for me, and you may need to modify, you know, this particular model, whatever it might be. And, you know, I, I truly believe that that also enhances the, my, my credibility because I'm not going to sit there and say, you know, this is what you need to do in order to be successful. Exactly. Who the heck am I to tell you what to do? <laughs> That's true. I understand that. <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. 
is because everyone has their own mind. They have their own mindset, and it's up to them to know how to take constructive criticism and take advice and critique that advice to where it best suits you. Yeah. Yes. And you know, it's it, it it's interesting because you know. You know, re reading about your background and, and looking a little bit and, and also based on the comment you just made, you know, is that, you know, people need to be able to take the developmental feedback and, and put it to use. I also look at things from the other side and how critical the need for recognition is. Yes. And you are doing a good job. I, you know, I, I you know, in, in the workforce or wherever it might be. Yes. I mean, yeah, I. My, my wife and I have a pretty traditional marriage in, in that mm -hmm. she does the majority of the cooking and things like that. And, and you know, after dinner, every night without fail, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you know, thank you for dinner, Lori. I really appreciate it. And I mean, it, it's just, it's those kinds of things though, because otherwise people get beaten down. Yes. They and do. I mean, what, 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 what fun is that? You know, or it's like, man, what do you know? Do I do anything right, or do I get, do I get any sort of uh, you know recognition here? Well, you did do something right. You ate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sometimes too much. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that I also look at is I was looking at your um, on your page, and it talked about emotional intelligence can you please elaborate on that sure for for me yellow emotional intelligence is one is one of the most critical skills anyone can have either personally or professionally and i i believe that very strongly for a lot of different reasons number one every you know one of the biggest things for emotional intelligence at least again from my perspective, the I response that I was saying earlier. <laughs> every single person has strengths. We all have our strengths and everybody needs to know what their strengths are. Exactly. I have my strengths, I'm proud of them, I have fun with them. And I articulate them to people. And I, and I do that proudly. You know, I said, I'm a good facilitator. I'm, an, I'm a good resource for people because I'm an avid reader. I like to think that I'm available for people and that I'm caring. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, it's so important to know yourself well. And on the other side of that, I know my strengths and I absolutely know what my limitations are too. Yes. I mean, I, I, I said to you, yeah, you know, as we got started, we had a little bit of technical trouble. I'm yeah. not strong technically. I never have been. I never will be. That's yeah. okay because nobody's good at everything. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. such an important skill to have. Yes, it is. And yes, you know, one, one of yes. the other key things <laughs> is, uh, uh, is 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 just knowing what triggers you. Mm -hmm. What you know, what what gets under my skin, because when I know that, and I can try to, and the second competency of emotional intelligence is self regulation. Mm -hmm. When I can regulate myself. And not get and and not and and not get real angry or real yes. emotional because I can't prevent myself from getting emotional. Yes. All of these things tie together, and you know, I mean, it, it's 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 funny because I, I tell this story often. I didn't realize how significant it was at the time. I do now. I, I've been a New York Giant season ticket holder for many years now. Wow. Okay. And we're in the tail. We're, we're tailgating a number of years ago. One of, the, one of the regular people who goes, Peter, is chief financial officer for a technology company in Manhattan. Okay. Peter comes up to me during the tailgate. Hey, 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 Mr. Leadership Development Man, <laughs> throw me the one tip, one tip that could make me the best leader possible. So I was like, all right, Peter, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I gave it a bit of thought, and I was dead serious when I went back to him. I was like, Peter, you know what? If you're going to limit me to one tip, get to know yourself extraordinarily well, yes. both personally and professionally, which is part of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Because when you know yourself that well, that's going to allow you to interact with, work with people more effectively. Yes, yes, indeed. And I truly, I truly agree with you on that. 
Um, I'm very familiar with emotional intelligence. It's just that, you know, each person explains it in a different way, but conveying the message, the message, it protrudes, you know, and it's, it's such a good thing when people understand what emotional intelligence is coming from various types of people because there's many ways to interpret it, but the message, like I say, the message protrudes, it's, it's out there. It's like, you can't help but to receive the message in regards to who it's coming from. That's the That's blessing right. part of it, you know. Well, and 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 again, you know, it 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 goes back to what you said earlier is that I I believe that very strongly too. As long as people are open to hearing the messages, mm -hmm. plural, because you know there are, and you know, and again, I, I I love the phrase, you know, when when I'm when I'm reading a book or when I'm in a seminar or e even when I'm facilitating, it's just like, hey, everybody, take what you need and leave the rest behind. It's okay. Yes. Because you won't agree with everything we talk about in here. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Exactly. <laughs> so, Ron, I, I love the way you talk. I love the way you speak because it definitely shows how you think. So I have a question that I ask a lot of people. Are you afraid to fail? No. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I, I, I'll tell you, I don't like to fail mm -hmm. at all. And I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm not sure I know anybody who just said, oh, yeah, I hope I fail. I hope I fail. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you, I, I think the one thing I will say to that, though, Yalo, first of all, no, I'm not afraid to fail. Equally as important with that, at least for me, I'm also not afraid to ask for help. Yes. Yes. And I think that that also prevents some failures for me, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes a lot of sense because it's perfect. It's, it's what it's the the tool that a lot of people need. A lot of people I hear when I'm when I'm teaching them and I'm coaching them about life experiences, they say I'm afraid to fail. And I ask them, why are you afraid to fail? Because failure is a part of the learning process. If you right. never fail at anything and you succeed at everything that you do, then you'll automatically assume that you know everything and you know exactly what you're doing. But then the moment that you do fail in a situation where you hit a rock in a hard place, right. you're devastated so hard that you give up. And that's, that's not fair to you. That's right. That, that, that's, that, that's exactly right. You know, and I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, by nature, I am not a big risk taker. Mm -hmm. I, I will. And I mean, I, I've learned over the years, though, that, yeah, I mean, it, it is okay. It's, you know, it, it's okay to make mistakes. I mean, I, I, I told my boss one time, I, I was, I was, oh, oh, I knew I was a train the trainer class. Okay. And I said, as I, like, Tracy, I'm going to try something completely different this time. There, there's just saying with one of the activities, I didn't like the way it was designed. I'm going to try something different. Go ahead. I, I went to her after the class the next day and I was like, boy, that stunk. <laughs> that, that just did not go well. I'm not going to try that again. And, and, and you know what, though? That, you know, your reaction is, that, is exactly what she did. Okay. She chuckled. What did you learn? What are you going to do differently next time? Yes. That's okay. And I was like, yeah. Because we learned something. <laughs> yes, that's amazing because I was going to say the same thing. What did you learn and what would you do differently in that particular scenario? <laughs> that is that's awesome. Right. So in your years of coaching and developing colleagues, has there been situations where you felt that you could have said or done something differently? And how does that affect you? Uh... Hmm. Let me think. There's got to there's got, there's be times. Uh, I think, I think, I think where I'll go with that is is uh, there 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 are there have been times in the past mm -hmm. where I will not I I will not. I will not speak my mind. Okay. Uh, you know, again, did it go into the a bit of psychological safety where I just didn't feel like 
it was safe to speak okay. up. And what my, my experience started to become, other people in the room began voicing the exact same concerns that I had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and I just sat there like a, you know, like a little mouse. And I was like, man, Ron, you got to learn to open up and you got to learn again, kind of like what you were saying before, you know, to take the risk, to open up, to put it on the floor mm-hmm. and, and to realize. And, and actually, you know what? Here, here's an example. Uh, and it just this just came to me. Okay. Uh, my my wife taught for many, many years and we we became friendly with her principal and her husband. Granted, I know that's not the best thing to do to become friendly with your, you know, with your boss and all that other stuff. Yeah. Still at home. We're out to dinner one night and Lori's principal and her husband both have PhDs. Whatever we were talking about that night, I didn't say much. And when we got home, Lori said to me, you were really quiet tonight. And I was like, I don't have anything to offer. Right. And she was like, you have got to stop doing that. You have got to stop doing that. You got to have the courage to speak up. And Yalo, the next time we went out, Jim, her, uh, uh, her, her, her principal's husband made some sort of comment. I wish I, I wish I could remember what it was and I don't. And I was just like, Jim, you know what? That's, that's interesting. I'll add something to that. Or, you know, this is what I think. And I almost fell out of my chair because he looked at me. He goes, no, Ron, that's really interesting. I like that perspective. Wow. And all of a sudden, you, know, you start to realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I do bring something to the table. Uh-huh. You know, I'm, I'm not God's be all end all. I do have something <laughs> to offer. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> so how many people would you say that you've actually helped in your coaching and development experiences? Oh, goodness. I mean, o- o- over the years, I mean, for- formally helped thousands. Okay. And I mean, and, and you know, I, I'll tell you one, one, one thing, too, and th- 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 it's, it's such a powerful comment that my friend, my friend, Dave Beverly made to me a long time ago. He's an old friend and an old colleague. Mm-hmm. He said to me one day, you never, ever know when you are making a difference in someone's life. You never know. And that, that can be someone on the street. That can be someone in a classroom. That can be somebody in a department store. It can be a smile. It can be a, hi, how are you? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, I mean, in, in a, in a, for whatever reason, this pops into my head, Yalo. It was four, oh, it'll be five years in January that my closest friend died. Okay. And it was, it was probably about six weeks before he died. I was down in Orlando. Uh, I had, I had been coaching someone actually. Mm -hmm. I was at the airport and I was having something to eat. I was sitting by myself and I was thinking about Paul and I must have looked terribly, terribly, terribly upset. Somebody, I don't know who it was, mm-hmm. walked past me and touched me on the back of my shoulder. And I turned around and looked, and I could not figure out who it was. Wow. That person has no clue to this day how badly I needed that touch and what that meant to me. Yes. yes. You know, and I mean, and again, you, you never, ever know when you're making a difference. You just don't. That's so true. That is so true. And I get to hear that on a daily basis. I have a, a friend of mine who um, actually is a coworker and a friend. And um, he tells me, he said, and he's, he's extremely passionate about it when he says it. He says, Yellow, you have no idea how much an impact you have on people every day. He say every time you open your mouth, people in at work and people everywhere we go, they're talking about you. They're talking about how much you've helped them or something that you said that's um, helped them. And I'm just like, you're right. I don't know because I don't know what else to say to that. I mean, all I know <laughs> is in my heart, I'm doing exactly what 
I wish that my grandmother could be here to see me do it today. And yeah. my grandmother passed away in 1998. And every day I still think about a lot of the things that she's taught me, a lot of things that she's done around me, because that's who I was raised by. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think about all these things at once. And I just think if she could see me today, she'd probably be looking at me and just, she'd do the same thing. She'd give me that pat on the shoulder, like, it's going to be all right. You're doing a great job. Yep. You know what you're doing. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to ever get a chance to experience that day. But I tell you this, a lot of times people will walk up to me strangers and I'm just deep in thought and they'll say, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know, you know, what's going on, but God told me to say this to you, that everything is going to be all right. Just keep doing what you're doing. And when I look at them, because I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm a spiritual person, but I don't claim any religion. Yes. And when I see that, when I hear people say that and they just walk up to me and don't know me from a can of paint, <laughs> <they're just> <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, I can't, like, I don't know what else to say except for thank you that you actually walked up to me and did this. And that's what that reminded me of when you said that somebody had just put their hand on your shoulder. That's what that reminded me of. And I think that these experiences actually happen to us because our hearts are in the right place. And it just lets us know that even when we think <clears throat> that no one's paying attention, that the most high, whoever, like whatever you name them or anything, the most high and all of the angels that follow us are there, whether we think they're there or not. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the best way yeah. that I can describe yeah. the experience. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and I mean, that's, yeah. And I mean, that, that's, that's how we all make a difference. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody makes a difference. Yes. And, you know, and, and, and like you say, it can be the touch on the shoulder. It can be a small comment. It can be opening a door for someone. And I mean, again, they, you know, David said, now this is pretty extreme and still, he said he was having a conversation on the phone with somebody he knew many years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he knew this guy all that well. And they talked for quite a while on the phone. They hung up. Years later, that guy went to David and he said, I had a loaded gun to my head. Wow. I had a loaded gun to my head, David, during that conversation. And you stopped me from, you know, from, from firing. Yes. And I was like, whoa. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> sometimes little things and sometimes they're real big things <laughs> and that is true i tell you one other experience and then i have another question for you um i was approximately 15 years old and there was this gentleman because i'm originally from chicago he's um he was out there and he was standing on the opposite side of the fence ready to jump down where the cars were on the highway mm. and i looked at him and i saw him and at first i was a bit startled because i had never seen anybody in that position before but instead of me panicking what i did was i actually climbed over first i started talking to him and he was like what do you know you're just a kid so i said hold on i climbed over the fence and i got on the other side where he was and I said, you know, every day is a good day to live. And I never thought that I would remember saying this. I said, you know, every day is a good day to live. I say, but if you ever have problems and you don't face your problems, they become overwhelming. And when they become overwhelming, you put yourself in positions like this. And he said, but I didn't put myself in this position. So I asked him, I said, well, did you climb over the fence? He said, yeah, I climbed over the fence. I said, well, are you the one that's attempting to jump? He said, yeah. I said, well, did you have any other problems that you were having before this day and you did not take care of them? You just let them linger. And he was like, he was like, yeah. He said, you know, for a 15 year old, you're awfully smart. He said, oh my God. 
And by the time I finished talking to him, the police had came. I climbed back over, and the gentleman climbed back over with me. And by the time his feet touched the concrete, he was in tears. He was literally in tears. I bet. And I just, to this day, I, I think about that, and I think about you know the children that I'm helping. I think about some of the adults that I'm helping and people that I talk to on a regular basis. And I think about that moment because to me, that was one of the most impactful moments that's ever happened in my life. Yeah, sure. So sure. for you, my other question is when you're doing uh, coaching and developing and you're, um, you're reading, because I noticed that you say that you read a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything that you can collaborate those things together and it stands out more so than anything? Uh, you know, like an experience, um, like like you were talking to one of your one of the um, students or your colleagues or somebody, and that type of event just pretty much sticks out like a sore thumb. You know. No, nothing, nothing, nothing sticks out like a, like a sore thumb, a sore thumb yellow. What I what I will talk about though is mm -hmm. the uh, when the 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 best piece of business advice I ever got was from an old boss. Mm -hmm. Who and I'll, it's a long story. I'll make it short. I was talking to him. I was I was actually talking to him about my friend and colleague Dave Beverly, who I was I mentioned him to you before. Uh -huh. And I said to Joe, I was like, I so admire David because he knows so much about so many different things. Mm -hmm. And Joe said to me, if you really want to become really, really good at what you do, you need to start reading. And he said, you've got it because that will make you a resource to people. Right. And over the past, I don't know, 17, 18 years, whatever it is, I've read about 300 leadership management books and everything else. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's not one incident, if you will, that sticks out. What I'm so happy about and what makes me so grateful mm -hmm. is all the book recommendations that I have been able to make to people over the years, and they vary. And, and again, that's one, of the, that's one of the fun things because I do, I do remember doing an American Management Association class one time, okay. and three of the participants came to me with different types of issues. And Ron, can I ask you about this? And Ron, I have a problem with this, whatever. And I made three different book recommendations. And instead of, it's not just, well, this is the book you should read. It's like, no, because I want to be well-rounded enough so that I can be diverse and I can make different types of recommendations based on the needs of the individual with whom I'm speaking. Okay, that's understandable. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. So as a child, um, is there something that you've done as a child that you still do today and you like to use that as a coaching tool or something to teach other people? As a child? Wow. I think you know what I, I I think one one of the things I would say mm -hmm. is that it's okay to say I don't know. Yes, yes. It, it's okay to say I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. I'll try to find out for you. Awesome. And you know it's it 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 was it was interesting because one of the one of the greatest uh, one of the greatest things that happened to me professionally is quite a few years ago. I was doing a, a three-day advanced sales training class for Toshiba where I worked. Oh. My boss flew in from California, and so did her boss. So the two most powerful people are in the room with me. Awesome. And at the end of the one day, we were talking about how the day went. And I still remember Tony saying to me, what do you want to do differently tomorrow? And I said to him, I was like, Tony, I said, I remember, I said, I don't know to one of the participants when they asked me a question. And that's unacceptable. I shouldn't have done that. Right. And he looked at me and I still remember him saying, that was one of the best things you did today. 
and said, nobody knows it all. You didn't try to sugarcoat. You didn't try to dance around it. You told them the truth. I don't know. I'll find out for you. And that gave you more credibility. Yes. yes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Thanks for that, Tony. <laughs> I like that. That was one of the things that I used to kind of struggle with. I didn't say, well, I don't know. Let me find out. I would just say, I don't know, and just leave it at that. And when I finally re came to a realization that that was something that's important to do, then I started having children. And with my children, I would say, I don't know, let's find out together. You know, so if it's something that I don't know, then we'll go and find out together. And then we share it with the other siblings. Right. It, be, it became fun after a while, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. I do it with my grandchildren yeah. if they tell me something. <laughs> And you know, it, 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 you, you, you make me think here too, Yalo, in that we have, we have a neighbor who uh, has two boys. Uh, one is 16 and one is 11. Mm -hmm. And the 11 year old has, has some health problems. He's been through a lot. He, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to say he's been bullied or not. Still mm -hmm. at all, he's, he's just had a tough time. And it, it was so interesting because his mom and dad decided they wanted him to go see a counselor slash therapist. Mm -hmm. And she was telling us about this. And she, she told us when she approached, when she approached her son mm -hmm. about going, her comment to him was, you know what, Brad, mom and dad don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. And you've been through a lot. And we'd like you to talk to someone else who might also be able to help you. Yes. And I thought that was, I thought, what a wonderful approach in that, hey, mom and dad don't have all the answers. And, you know, I told her, I was like, Heather, listen, I'm not a parent. I can't tell you, you know, is that right? Is that wrong? Whatever it might be. In my opinion, that was one of the best things you could have ever done, though. Yes. Is yes. to just let him know mom and dad are not perfect. Mom and dad don't know everything. Exactly. Exactly. That is so true. And one of the things that I like talking to other children about talking to children about is the acts of bullying because as a child I actually went through that for a while and it was scary it was tough it was something that that I would never um, wish upon anybody I would never wish that anybody else actually go through that it's it's a tough situation and now when I talk to other children about it and actually help them to get through things of that nature it makes me feel good because that's sure. something that a lot of people, if you've never experienced it, you really don't understand the emotional confrontation that you deal with internally as well as externally. That's right. That's and it's right. a battle. It's a real battle. Yeah. And and when you know when and and when when anybody and ideally as a youngster has the opportunity to exp to express their feelings or just to share what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, I don't know, how, how, how freeing is that? And, and, and what I'm thinking about is, I know people you know, who for years and years and years and well, well into their adulthood mm -hmm. have held on to things that have gone on in their childhood. Yes. And they never had the opportunity to talk about it, deal with it, or let it go. That's and true. I mean, it, it's just horrifying. That is so true. That is so true. And it's it's sad. It sucked. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We we live and we learn and we continue to grow as we are learning for those of us who are paying attention to that. <laughs> That's right. Again, for those who are paying attention, for those who want to learn, the yes. information is there, the help is there. Yes, indeed. You just gotta want it. And you got to go out there and get it. You can't let that information stay inside of your head and become an issue. Because one of the things that I learned in college is issues are ongoing. Problems are something that you can solve. And if you take your issues and turn them into a problem, you solve that problem and you're moving on to the next portion of your life. Right. So, <laughs> so those are things that I've learned. Well, Ron, <laughs> I truly thank you for being on my show. Thank you so much. You are truly an inspiration and 
I've learned some things here. I really have. Good. Yeah, I'm glad. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Oh my goodness. That I mean, I just I mean when you when you listen to other perspectives on things, even if I'm doing the same thing, even when you listen to somebody else's perspective, it can definitely take you into another realm of life, a positive realm of life. <laughs> so right. I'm loving that. Thank you so That's right. much. And thank you for being a part of my show. This was this has definitely been a pleasure. And I hope to get you back on here at a later time. Good. Uh, Yellow, it would be my pleasure. I'd love that. Thank you so much, Ron. Okay. You have a wonderful day. And I hope that this was a good experience for you. It was, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ron. All right. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>